Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. I'm going to be joined by Attack Power. Good morning, good evening and good day everyone. In this video we have for you game one of a best of one between, oh, wait it's us, Vulcan and oh. Attack Power. Look at that. Oh my oh my. I decided to join the realm of Attack Power in this 1v1 today so we're going to be casting this, it should be good fun. Yeah, we decided to play a game, and then we would, uh, you know, kind of reflect <laughs> reflect on ourselves after the game. Uh, it should be an interesting exercise. So we have here uh, Vulcan. He didn't even have a 1v1 deck. Um, <clears throat> sorry, if you check out my channel, we did a little deck build building video. I don't know if Vulcan is posting that or not, but if he yeah, is, you should check well. that out. Yep. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so he built a 44th Strelke deck, which is my... I hate this division so much. It's super good. I don't hate it because it's bad. I hate it because it's so good. I hate playing it. Uh, and then I'm playing on the 17th SS on Maverick, and he is on Balanced. Yeah, so I'm on Balanced with 44th. He's on Maverick with the 17th. And we're on Orsha North, the OG map of Steel Division 2, which we both know very well, I expect. And uh, yeah, we're just going to basically try and deploy as quickly as possible attack powers telling me how he's not too fast at deploying but i seem yep. to be beating you in that front right now <laughs> yeah i get accused all the time it's the only time in this game you can be perfect it's the only time you can craft a perfect thing yeah another time it's at the clicking. end whilst you were taking your time i was definitely making sure to tuck all of my transports right up well, it's not a rush we're, we're yeah. playing a we're playing a fun game here there's there's no need to <laughs> no need to rush the guy right in the league is there like a advisory as to how long you should take or is it just like no, when no, both players just, are ready nope you just when players are ready okay. don't be a jerk and rush people interesting yeah you know, it's again it's it's the only time you get to like craft your game plan and really not be playing reactionary you know so right. and I, yeah, I just take my time. We also people sh people should know too that we left our chat on during this, so we were trash talking each other for this entire oh, game. More like <laughs> Attack of Powers trash talking me. No, no, no. That's so. No, no. <laughs> I'm not taking it. Vulcan just sat there and laughed, which was his own form of trash talking. Let's not lie. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna quickly go through what I'm gonna do here because what I had oh, in Lord. mind. So. On the top, I did the Sapley. Well, we got the PTRS squads, obviously, looking for transport snipes early on, just trying to get them into nice positions where he might potentially attack or positions that I can get further up on the field than he can. And then I've got the triple Sapley on the top side. I was hoping to make sure I could secure the top side trees, like the forested area, with a couple of Gavadi DP and an AT gun just to kind of maybe try and put a little bit of pressure on there, but not too much. And then I had the guards moving into the town on the top side with the two PTRS squads there as well uh, just to kind of hold the position there. I had an SU-152 uh, that was moving up onto the big hill and then that's going to be with a sniper and a guard. So the guards was going to push into the middle somewhere and then the SU-152 was actually there to support the bottom side engagement. So um, if attack power pushed against me on the bottom side across the open area the su-152 can actually sit up on that hill and get the 2000 meter range onto the open area so that was the plan there and then i've got guards and separately in the bottom with the uh, t-34 to back us up and i've got two 50 mil mortars as well which are pretty nice for pinning down the dominant long range infantry that attack power has so yeah that was my plan what was yours yeah, so uh, I love being able to capture the opposing town on this map. So you can see I'm deploying a lot up north here. I only have three units to go into this little complex up north. A uh, little light, I will agree, but I do deploy a couple recon over here as well once we get there. So flamethrower and two, basically, you know, Volkdeutsch and uh, Pendergren uh, into this complex, along with some recon cars eventually. Through the middle here, I'm throwing a bunch of Flammenwerfers to go into your town and this little complex here on your side along with a 50 mil uh, pack 38 to cover the hill with an IG-33 also on that hill, bringing in a flak 36, 37 mil early because the TUs and everything, I need to try to stop those as soon as possible. They will be very dangerous. Throwing some SS Legionary as well into that town, along with my SPW-233s, hopefully to kind of push 
a breakthrough there at the beginning. Uh, coming down south here, I have a couple Flammenwerfers going into my own town because I need to try to make sure you don't make a push across. You do have a significant speed advantage with your Soviet stuff, and I no longer have tractions in this deck because they stole them all from me. Uh, 233 coming into support as well, uh, and of course some Pendergrens and such. Down south, just a light holding force of uh, Volkdeutsch and Recon, and here is that PE2 Recon plane that I sort of expected at some point. Yeah, so you were waiting for the siren for this one. <laughs> I, brought, yes. uh, I managed to get a, a nice sight on, on your bottom side deployment. I was a bit more worried about the units coming into the into your town, like the, the recon vehicles there. Uh, I thought that that might end up joining the fight on the bottom side, so that's kind of what I was worried about initially. What were your first thoughts? Yeah, I mean, my, most, of my, most of my efforts were focused on getting into this town and not totally screwing up this putsch, which I did anyway. Uh, for some reason, I just could not see this PTRS in this house. So despite the fact you were killing me, uh, I didn't really notice the units dying until, you know, one or two had died. So you can see one goes there, and then here two goes another one, and, three. and there, we go. there goes another <laughs> one. Um, but, like, it never revealed. I know, and I know it tells me they're nice. dying, but of course there's flame floor units dying all over the place. So like, well, it might you know, be not... maybe because of the two three threes not being in like line of sight properly. Maybe they should have they should have been for that edge building there. They should have been able to see. So it was very weird. I just could not. I honestly, it took me a second to realize. Oh my god, there's a PTR shooting all my crap. Um, but I still have the 1410 early here, so I picked up these two flags in the middle with the Flammenwerfer in this uh, complex here. And then it was a matter of just using my 233s to push forward. Um, up top here, I knew my 233 would probably be able to hold off anything as long as the T3476 didn't show up. Um, so I, that's what I was keeping an eye out for there. Yeah, initially I moved the SU76 on the top side to go deal with those like light armored units, but then I diverted it to the middle to help with the 233s there instead because that was a bit more of a threat you getting into that town. Um, on the bottom side, I was just making a big push here because initially, obviously, I saw that you didn't have as much there. And so I'm just freely attack moving forwards on that bottom side. Yeah, and I, d I try to keep my Volkdeutsche in a, like a position that maybe if you drove a tank by, they would catch a Panzerfaust in there. Um, unfortunately, the infantry found that first. Um, you know, up top, I tried moving my 233s forward to maybe get into a position to snipe some infantry as they drove by. Uh, I don't think you for some reason and I don't know why you did this. Why did you drive this Gavardia DP off the road into this forest already? Oh, because it's not safe for me to go all the way up into the town right now with you having pressure on it. So I would unload I know the guards even earlier. Go to the, the and then second Well yeah, I just I unloaded it there and then I just thought I'd attack move it with my T thirty four. And also I saw your T thirty three is moving round, so I okay. would have also like informed my decision there. Well, in here, so this 233 gets a line assigned this T-3476. I, me I immediately start backing up thinking he's going to shoot him, and then I realize he didn't see him, but it was too late. Like, I could have had a great side shot in that 76, but I panicked because I was like, oh, he's just going to turn and kill me. Of course he didn't. Yeah, well, again, I, I was going to try and go for it, but then I was like, I didn't want to chase you around the corner and get killed. So yeah. I just kept carried on for um, the one that was in the open. But yeah, and unfortunately... Sorry, down south you killed. Yeah. I called in a Panzer Shrek to deal with this T-34, and you found it before I ever got into position. And this T-34 is just going to wreck me from, <laughs> from yeah. here on out. So the the 50 mil mortar on this bottom side are really useful. It already took, helped me take out one of the Volksdeutsche. Uh, the Panzer Shrek I spotted with the guards because it got a little bit too close. And I just about I don't know if you like lost line of sight there on the the T-34, but I backed it up just in case. Yes, uh, I did. Yeah. I lost it, and then, of course, this ridiculousness. Ugh, anger. So this JU-87 does not make it. I'm just going to I'm gonna spoil it now. <laughs> yeah, the Yak-3 is super fast. It's got the 625 kilometer per hour speed, so it's catching up to the JU-87. Yeah, and I forgot how fast these things were. Screaming both internally and externally <laughs> <laughs> at this point as my Yak-3 <laughs> came in and shot it down. <laughs> oh, watching it again hurts a second time. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty rough, I'll admit. And then my T thirty four. I don't know if you saw this happen, but my T thirty four was getting free kills onto your transports in the middle. I think you just kind of weren't paying attention oh, at that point. Yeah, I I had called these in to reinforce. And look at this. This pack thirty eight sitting here not shooting. There's an elevation problem. Yeah. The reason I wasn't paying attention because I knew the thirty four was there, and I was like, oh, my pack thirty eight will kill this. Except it never shot. It just sits here, looking yeah. at you. 
for a very long time. So that absolutely, because I would have killed this T-34 and gotten plenty of troops into this middle section, but instead I lost them all. And here comes my favorite plane in the game. Just kidding. Hate this thing. TU-2S. Yeah, so just go for the bombing strike onto the legionary because at close range, the guards are just going to lose. So I was hoping to pin down both squads. I managed to catch one at least, and I'm going to be killing that off. Uh, on the bot side, I'm just cleaning up and getting control over the hill because there's only one flag there. I can maybe go and try go a bit deeper, but it's not really much point because otherwise you're just going to start reinforcing that real hard and it's just going to push me back. So I'm just kind of trying to chill because I'm balanced and you're Maverick at the end of the day. Yeah, and I once I lost this flag, I didn't. I said forget it. Um, I was going to lose so many troops getting up on this hill. So the problem with, with, at least for me, a personal issue with the with 17th SS is they don't have a lot of brawling tanks. You know, you have your Stug fours, and those are great, but they, you know they have to turn and stuff all the time to shoot things. So they're constantly exposing their side. So they don't do great at close quarters. So this T34 in this position on the hill, I didn't have a great way to kill this. So I had a really hard time getting back up onto this hill safely without getting like wiped out by because your light AT kills my recon cars. Your T-34 also does that and supports your infantry. So I was in this like catch-22 where I could not get that thing in there. Yeah. And yet still I sit with this pack 38 still looking at this T-34 <laughs> doing nothing. Yeah, so I did. That's devastating. I did spot this like flammant verfer in the middle. I really wanted to get rid of this because obviously it's like providing free flags basically for you in the center, but unfortunately my guards, they just get pinned down there. And then the oh, I think the Marder ends crappy... up killing it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those crappy flamethrowers that you were talking about. Those <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky to be alive. T-34 completely whipped there. Finally, your pack 38 fires and kills my T-34. Well, yeah, I, I noticed this and moved it, like clicked it manually to move it. If I yeah. had done that a, two minutes ago, that would have been killed. I would have been free to get troops in here. That was very bad. The other thing that I had trouble with on in this game was I wanted to get rid of that 233 on the top side and the 222. And I tried to bomb the 233 and it just survived the 22 bombing strike, which was unfortunate. Uh, otherwise, it would have been quite nice. But my 45 is just going to have a go there and pops it instead. So that was all good. And bringing up the guards and now a T34 as well to help with that engagement. But once again, yeah, in the mid, look, guards are getting so close to your flamers. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then getting yeah, hit the, by now, the IG. Yeah, the IG did get him. Um, yeah, those uh, terrible. So we had a conversation before the game where Vulcan was hating on flamethrowers, and I told him they're they're the they're the best. And I'm glad I'm glad they're representing right now. I, I mean, it doesn't have to be a flamethrower squad there to do that job, right? It but it's only 15 points. It's only 15 points. Yeah, throwing back a guard two squad is 20. Squads. Like it's threw not... back two Gavardi squads. <laughs> I know, the support weapons did. <laughs> well, the flamethrower was there. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's... So I got a little bit of a push on the bottom side. My guards, um, I had them there for a while, not unloaded, because I was kind of focusing elsewhere, but uh, these two guards were like, supported by the SU-152 on this hill. Where we're doing a decent job pushing towards this town. I knew that there would be something like close range there. I was expecting legionaries. Like obviously, there's flamethrowers there now. Um, but basically, what would end up happening is I can just fire position them with the SU-152 and push into that town on the bottom. But you started to reinforce it with that martyr. Yeah, I knew I needed to take out... And these things were absolutely backbreaking the entire game. And the issue was I had no way to, to really reach out and get these things um, off of the map. Uh, so my only choice was because you know at the two thousand meter range, all you ha if as long as you were watching, you could very easily back up any time I started to get closer with my armor to take it out. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it this was these were major issues for me. I'm now bringing in even more guards to the middle. I should have definitely paid more attention on on securing these middle flags earlier. That definitely would have saved me some tickets, but it wasn't too bad. I was quite happy with my position on the bottom side and. I'm easily able to kind of focus on this top side a bit more throughout the game. So, yeah, I wasn't too concerned. And now here come the TU2s again. <laughs> one's uh. going for the Pioneer and one's going for the Marder there, just trying to break down those two units. So Marder 3 now taking some shots at the SU-152. Yeah, I didn't actually is... notice that on the bottom side. You having a go there. That was yeah, I was too busy microing airplanes over here. I Of course, my... BF109 takes out neither of the TU2s. <laughs> Catches 
neither of them. I did take out that SU-152. And I'm trying to fly your yak over my Flak 36. Now, uh, did you pull him off manually? Yeah, I did, yeah. I, I'm not sure if you could have gotten the back or not. Felt like you were about to. I wasn't trying to swing your around onto you because of the AA and, being there. I just wanted to get distance on the AA. And, then... and look at look look at what he's left at suppression. Yeah, well, as, as long as the yak turns, it doesn't get pinned, so. And you called in a second. Now I was upset, because now there's two fighters. Yeah, and then you managed to get away, because those fighters aren't catching up to each other, so I'm just going to reset. He's going to reset and gets out of there. <laughs> I, I feel like you're maybe a little bit lucky that I didn't get all the back of you at the end. But, uh, yeah, the, the flag 36 definitely made things I needed difficult. I one... I needed one more hit from that thing to retreat that first one. Now, I, d I see now how weak you were in this town. I wish I had made the push again here. Uh, I had diverted troops down to the south to kind of make a push back up on this hill, which I don't do for a while anyway. So it was a, it was a bad allocation of troops. Yeah, you brought me. in this Stug 4 and it sat there for a very long time on that bottom side. I did well, see it actually come in. Yeah, I didn't want to just... Because I knew you had this like M42 somewhere in here. So I didn't want to just drive it up. Because he wasn't going to, like, you know what I mean? I just didn't want to drive it up and have it get APCR shot with some stupid crit and die. <laughs> for for yeah. no reason. So, like, I'm kind of stuck. I knew it was sitting here, but there was nothing I could do with it other than just try to, like, cover off the main road in case you did something stupid like driving troops right down the road. Um, I there, there was no way to move forward safely. Yeah, so on the top again, 50 mil mortar helping me out with these uh, engagements. Oh, that thing was so obnoxious. They're, they're just really nice for pinning down they squads. Uh, nice they're and quick at range. And, and I find particularly against Panzergrens or, you know, just MG squads in general. Um, with the Soviets, you don't have as good long-range engagement. So making sure you use support weapons to your advantage is super important. BU-2S to the south here. I am, we are in phase B, so I do have my upgraded income. Uh, I am able to dodge the bombs with my Martyr 3 here. I did see you doing that, so I, I made a evasive maneuvers here. Uh, and then, of course, I bring in a Flak 88, uh, Flak 40, uh, 40, why I always say 88. I bring in an 88 because I'm getting really tired of this crap with these TU-2S. They're so hard to stop. Like, even the 88s don't really stop them from bombing most of the time because they're so fast and they have very good resilience, so they don't get suppressed very fast. And that time I brought in the Yak 3 preemptively, just in case you decide to bring in your fighter to try and shoot it down. And on that side, I have a much better chance of killing your fighter because there's no AA, or at least that I know of yet, on that bottom yeah, side. Yeah, and, and this T-34-76 up north is was absolutely killer. Because, you know, at this range, the T-34-76 can kill the Stug Forge just fine. You know, it's not, like, invincible to the T-34 by any means. So, like, I couldn't really bring a Stug 4 up here to fight this because that's what you'd want. You know what I mean? So if I lo if I invested and lost it, so I was just kind of like stuck up north. Yeah, I, and I had there the were extra, things I could have done. The extra AT8 gun up there as well. And the nice thing as well is I had that leader there the whole time that was providing veterancy on that top side. Yeah. That's great. I did call in a Nebelwerfer here to start the, the big boom process of the 300. I, I wanted to call in artillery earlier so I could get as much value out of it as possible as the game went on. So I decided to do this. I actually stopped my infantry on the hill here so I could bring them in after I did this, which worked out pretty well, actually. Yeah, those first, can, you know. first two rockets, just like was yeah. bang on target. I saw it coming and I tried to move, my, start moving my units, but yeah, it was really bad. That TU2 in the middle, <laughs> clapping that flaming bell, but that was a guess, by the way. <laughs> you were like, how did you see that? I was just like, yeah, I just guessed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I figured that's what it was. I wasn't sure. That. I was like, did he see it? Yeah, I just guessed it. And of course, time. my BF 109 can't catch it because TU 2s are apparently the fastest bombers ever. Yeah, and and now this Yak 3 around. has like a magnet. It's like oh. a magnet on my BF 109. The Get thing away. is, if I stay on you in that position, I'm going to pass you and then it's going to end badly. So I had to pull away. Now my, down south, I moved two SPW 231s. I, I was hoping I could dodge this T 3476s. I did just take out the light AT on the hill with both of those. I probably should have just mass pushed my infantry forward at this point. I just threw one Volkdeutsche forward. I didn't want to risk too much, and I split my two three ones, which of course immediately one got popped by the T-34. I tried to run away. It was too late. Too late for me. Yeah, on the top, you were pushing me with the Legionaries oh. and the Pioneer as well, but the 50mm mortar saving my bacon oh, yeah. there as well. I just, real 
I just realized the 88 took out your Yak 3 and I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. I actually lost like two, two or, or actually, I think I lost you all lost of my Yak 3s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you lost all of them. It was kind of I was bad. counting. <laughs> That's why I, I ended up on the Yak, I ended up on the Yak 1B bombers for, <laughs> yeah. I did start bringing up my own AA so I could kind of like try and control the air engagements a little bit if I was going to bring in those fighter bombers because they're not as well they don't have the same sort of agility as a normal plane yeah a normal fighter that is yeah the loss of that j i have a ju-88 coming in now the loss of that ju-87 at the beginning of the game was actually really backbreaking because if you can keep that around that's what i needed to kill these t-34 76s which would have allowed my armor my armored cars and light units to really take advantage this ju-88 oh it did drop its bombs yep i thought it did that one got it yep oh, okay all right i feel better now <laughs> And then my yak it, came it in. Does die. Yeah, it does and die. Yeah, doesn't die. It's trying to shoot down the Ju-88, but those Ju-88s are tanky. And they're pretty fast. And you have your fighter on the way. So the, sm the smart thing for me to do here is to pull into the fighter so I don't lose my yak. But I committed for the kill onto the Ju-88. <laughs> to kill it. <laughs> but I don't quite get there. Yeah, killing that Ju-88 would have been massive for me because it's one less thing you can use to kill the T-34s. Yeah, the the the. G6U4 is actually really strong with the 30 millimeter cannon. So, like, once you get into range, that thing melts targets really fast. Yeah, so now I'm finally thinking I want to get rid of this IG in the middle. It's annoying the crap out of me. Trying to move forward with my guards in the open, they keep getting popped. So, I bring up the T3485 to deal with the Stug 4 that I can see on the hill at this point. And then I've also got the SU152 that I'm going to be bringing up for the IG. I did also spot the ATA at one point as well because I think it fired maybe at. Or my infantry or something uh but yeah i did did spot it yeah it probably went after something also got a big push coming in on the top side as well double su 76 with the t 3485 well 1943 variant that is to so have a go at your stug and these uh light armored cars yeah and at this point i definitely thought to myself it's time to get over to this other side of the town you can see the nebelwerfer coming i wish obviously i wish i had done this sooner now uh that's definitely a big issue of mine it's just not being aggressive enough when i have the advantage especially playing Maverick, so I definitely sacrificed. I could have had this town pretty early. Yeah, uh, but I do get a nice bombing strike there as you start to move. Yeah, that hurts. Oh, that was really, really nice because it basically pinned down all of the squads that would have been attacking there and lets the oh, yeah. guards get close. Meanwhile, I'm also fire positioning with these double SU-152s on your AC-8. It was uh, doing a nice job. I, well, I, really? I couldn't actually see the ATA. I just knew it was there. So I was kind of just like fire positioning the area, hoping it would, would kill it. Yeah, and the problem is there's not much I can do about this. Like now I see there's no AA, but my, my assumption was there'd be AA there. And even if there wasn't, you know, any JU I sent over here would die because the fighter would obviously catch up to it and I'd lose it. So, you know, a, my 110 point cluster for a 60 point SU 152 is a hard trade to make, especially when there's two and I know I'd only kill one. TU-2S is coming in again for your infantry in the town. Oh my god, these things are so obnoxious. <laughs> Attack power was loving it. <laughs> oh my god, it's obnoxious the second time. <laughs> it's obnoxious reliving it. Yeah, They're such crap. Look at they got hit by... They didn't get pinned until three hits from an 88. It's ridiculous. That was a very nice bonus, right? The BF-109 is not getting anywhere it's close. It's too no. slow. And I should have just run them away. Yeah, so at this point, did you not realize there was like an, like less AA? Because obviously I've only got that 25 on the bottom side. Well, yeah, so I, I saw the 25 starting to do some damage, so I was like, oh, crap, now he's got AA. Uh, and of course, now you bring in some aerial planes. Uh, yeah, so the, the, I had to bring in the recon aircraft first in this case because I couldn't actually see the BF-109s yeah. up there. So <laughs> I had to work out the timing on the Yak-1 to bring it in. And uh, yeah, I managed to time that one nicely. Also managed to get a cheeky bombing strike out of that as well. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to follow my fighter and instead you did that. Do I kill this 50 mil here? This this mortar? I really hope I do because that thing was annoying me so much. Nope, it doesn't yeah, look it like I will. Down, oh, yeah. no, I did. Okay, good. Yeah, it was almost out of ammo anyway. <laughs> um, I did get the yeah. here. That was, I think I just wasn't paying attention to it at that point. I do bring in these Kanayas on the bottom side. I, I actually can't remember what happened to them. To what? What? The Kanayas on the bottom side. I brought in the two Kanayas. Oh, they must have died. They died to the oh, 231. Yeah, I was wondering. I didn't see the 231 kill that. So I'm moving this Panzerschreck thinking there's infantry in this forest here. 
and there never was. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, Mariak gets another one near BF109, so that was another cheeky player. P2, I, I kind of baited your fighter with P2 over the AA that I brought in. And then now my yeah, up north, my Stug never sees I, it. Well, I didn't have anything to see with him, and it changed targets. You see, it never even fired. It switched targets halfway in the middle, so it never shot. Yeah, because it was Lovely. initially targeting at the SU-76, but then it changed target to the T-3485 because it's higher armor. So, yep. yeah, I I, so, I I kind of exploited that. I'm not gonna lie. And well, no, that's that's awesome <laughs> that you noticed. That because, and again, this this was the issue with the Stug up on this hill, um, because it just it it funct it's too light i mean it, it's plenty good at range but it's too light for this tight area so like things like su-76s kill it just fine yeah. this ju-87 why oh, didn't it drop yeah I mean, clusters usually drop even if you lose line of sight i think in that case it, like it was right click order and then it just didn't see it i don't know um but yeah the su-76s weird. are really good like because they aim really fast because they're open top vehicles um and so the Stug, which is like 85 points, if you bring in a couple of these SU-76s, you almost never lose. Like, you might trade one of the SU-76s, but that's totally fine, because the, the Stug costs more. Yeah, it's like the Martyr Three, Very similar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. 35-point open top AT unit that just overperforms for its price. Managed to finally this point, grab back that flag on the top side, and we, yeah, we moved into phase C, so balance thing come. And Vulcan has taken the lead for the first time in the game. And we can see things slowly, slowly degenerating for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm building up more and more forces. I got two guards and the, the tank is coming in and another guards on the top side as well. Just trying to get in, get a decent position in that forest area. And then I'm also going to be bringing in some stuff on the bottom side because uh, I kind of noticed that you'd like push me back there. I hadn't actually been paying too much attention to the bottom side throughout because uh, we'd, yeah, we'd both been so focused on the top. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I, I I snuck this Panzer Shrek in to kill the T thirty four, which I did succeed. So I was able to bring in my recon trucks to kill off your units down here and recapture the complex. Now I knew there's stuff in this forest, but I, I just needed the flag, you know. So it's there wasn't a lot of reason to overcommit. Now I didn't realize you had nothing back here at all. Like if I had actually pushed a little bit here, I would have probably captured both these flags. Yeah, yeah, but for a, for a little know. while, but it would have been probably too late still. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, so my guards jump up, finish off that crew, kill T-33. And now we have the noob mistake of the T-3485 engaging the T-22 on the top with the APCR. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot well, to turn yes, off the APCR. Yes, the T-34 shot one APCR shell, so it did not kill the SPW-222, which allowed it to live. Now it does not go any longer. He keeps chasing it. He's so rude. I try to get away here. Yeah, I do let it go for now because I'm not entirely Into convinced. Into the jungle. But I'm focusing on this SU-76 engagement with the Stug. Managed to get a nice spawning crit with the first SU-76 as well. So yep. that's an easy kill for the SU-76s there. And in the middle here, my pa my Jagdpanzer IV also once again in an elevation problem. Yep. Not firing because it can't of lift its gun fire high enough. And now it's taking bounces from the okay. T-3485. And Out of range and he fires and... Pop. 28% oh that was 28% penetration I'll just remind you again because oh, I, I think I told him at the time <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because I, I said to attack power that uh, I should play 1v1 more often because my luck seems to extend into 1v1 whereas whenever I'm playing on stream when I'm playing 3v3, 4v4, 10v10 it's just nowhere to be seen like my luck just disappears I think it's because I'm so unlucky that it just makes everyone around me luckier that's generally how I feel. <laughs> I uh, notice people around me seem to be extremely lucky all the time, and I'm just I'm gonna go with it's because I, my my extreme bad luck gives them extra good luck. Should come to my streams then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I could really help you out. I really could. On the you bottom do not side. Want me on your team. <laughs> yeah, finally, just amassing a bunch of infantry that can use the forest to get through towards this bottom side and maybe try and take that flag back. Uh, T-34 is helping clean up the Panzergrands. SU-76 finally catches up to the T-31 on the top as well. And yeah, things just start falling apart here for Attack Power because he's playing Maverick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is... I mean, we're five minutes in and I, I do not have an advantage, which is, you know, kind of the death warrant for you. 
Um, and you've just been fire positioning this SU-152 on my hill this entire time, which was obnoxious. Yeah, so I just kind of <laughs> left it there firing forgot, at that I road. Forgot. Yeah, and I just I just assumed it'd be a nice place to keep firing, so you can't just bring out anything in the open there. Uh, no, I just blind armor. fired. I blind blind dropped this Ju-88, hoping maybe I'd get lucky. Yeah, I, I was I long don't. gone at that point. <laughs> I okay. saw it come in. I, I got not get lucky. I did have the yak come in to maybe try and intercept, but then I went for the bombing strike instead, but the 37 stops it from doing that. Yeah, the, 80, the 88 and the, yeah. And down south, I, I am holding off your push, you know, and really, this this is quite a strong defense with Panzergrens in this, in this area, but we will see soon how you simply solve that problem. Yep. Got a sniper coming up. It's going to be checking out the whatever's in that cover there. You unload. Did you accidentally call in a 25 mil with no transport? Up no, north? that was the one that I used to kill one of your fighters. Oh, way back when. Yeah, I just forgot to give an attack move order afterwards. So oh, I okay. just sat there for a long time. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not too much of it's, a it's, worry. It's fun, to let, it's fun to let the audience see all of our new mistakes <laughs> while we play. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, so bring up T3485 yeah. on this bottom side to kind of solve any issues with, like, armor and I've also got an extra couple of guards on the way. I've also got uh, another T-34 and SU-152 coming onto the hill to join my other T-34 there to overwatch the town. So... When I move this 231 down south way too close to this forest, you guys should definitely go watch my tutorials on how to suck less. <laughs> yeah, this as is not see, the I've, first one I've, you've I've, lost to this as well. Because you yeah, lost a T-31 on the top side to my guards as well. Yeah, yeah. You guys can see I've learned my lessons through my own failures. <laughs> T3485 gets your Marta 3 in the mid, finally. The and then starts my 88. Yeah, and of course, on its second so it lands, it it hits and penetrates, and on the second shot, it changes target to the TU. This horde of TUSs here, TU2Ss. Yeah, your favorite oh plane. God. Would you look at that? Oh my god! Oh my god! This is disgusting. Uh, I couldn't deal with it the other way, so, and I had the TU2s ready, so goodbye Panzergrens. And now I can just freely push my guards all the way through. I changed one of the orders fast enough, the other one I didn't manage to get done in time. but We can watch my BF-109 fail to catch these things once again. Gets into range, but only with its machine guns. The 30 mil has a limited range, a, a lower range, and he gets away. Yep. So I angrily fly around back there. He call in your P2. And I decide it's a consolation prize for me. Yeah, so... Except it's, except it's not. It was bait. Yep. <laughs> and, and, at uh, that, yeah. and at that point, with the 15-9 and the loss of my fighter and my blood boiling, I decide that is that for today. It wasn't going to get any better. The balance versus Maverick. No. And my arm is building up at that point. Yeah. It was an interesting game. Like... As, as I mentioned to you, to you before, I was surprised that you focused a lot in the center early on. I I thought I would just contest you in the top and bottom side, and then my late game advantage would allow my armor to dominate the middle, so I could deal with that later. Um, but yeah, you were saying how you wanted to get into the town. Yeah, so. I, I like capturing that town in the middle of the beginning, because it really does, it's actually not super easy for your opponent to get back into it. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of work and troops and stuff to kind of weasel your way back in slowly. So that's kind of like, I always find if I can capture the town at the beginning, it's very easy to win because then all their troops have to be, because that's two flags. I mean, that's that's already a 1410. And if you capture the little complex down south from it, that's right there's three. So you're already on a double tick and it's not very much territory to hold. So from there, the opponent is forced to really funnel a lot of their points into that area. And then you can push anywhere else and can and make a lot of easy progress. And of course, that push did not materialize the way I needed it to. And from there, I just never got the footing in any of my pushes to really, you know, put you on the back foot, which which you need to do as a Maverick player. I mean, what can I say? Those flamethrowers just didn't quite do the job, oh, did they? They died of the PTRS. Okay, the main <laughs> reason, okay, the one of the main reasons I use the flamethrowers is because it's one of the only German units that's faster, you know, that actually gets to the front line in a reasonable amount of time. Um you know that's one of the main reasons, and and truthfully, they for a fifteen point two man unit, they do overperform. They can take out rifle squads pretty effectively, one v one. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, so team stats here, Vulcan ended up with a 2,415 points versus my 2,090. Uh, and we were pretty even, I think, going into you know the end of phase B. A lot of that pointage is just me at the end throwing crap at him in anger. Yeah, yeah. There was a, a few things there. Like the the Jag Panzer kill was definitely lucky. Um and like just getting a lot of your armor like later on was was a lot of those extra kills. But yeah, the TU twos, they were there throughout the entire game. I was kind of I guess trading Yak threes to keep them alive. <laughs> yeah. Basically, so yeah. All of my Yak threes ended up going down, which is unfortunate, but I guess they kinda of did their job. And it had plenty they did, of yeah. the Yak ones left. Yeah, and if we look at the kills here, uh, we can see, you know, your T-3476s at the beginning were actually really important because they took out my armored cars, which could have really helped me, you know, kind of run you down early. And then the SU-152s were just a constant thorn in my side that really made it hard to do the things in the middle of the map that I was looking to do. And, you know, there's not a lot of 2,000 meter AT in in uh, 17th SS, you know, you got your 88s and that's about it um so it was it was difficult to reach out and get those things especially knowing that if i threw a ju or a you know any at plane at it, it was going to die to the to the fighters and yeah you ended up having you had a lot of su-152s in your deck so killing one did not mean much yeah the six total so yeah getting so rid of it was them is a, a bit of a task yeah it was going to be a slog uh yeah, on my side here, my I did take out my BF one and I did kill three, you know, of the yaks like we talked about. Two three threes did pretty well. A uh, couple good units here and there. Nebelwerfer, it didn't pay itself off, but you know, it's more for the pinning and stuff. It's like a mobile off map, really. At the end of the day, um, yeah, it was interesting the Nebelwerfer because I think it, it kind of came down to. Both both times it fired into the town, it wasn't really hitting much, and so I wasn't particularly worried. And then, like you followed it up for, and took the first flag, but then the second one, I managed to stop your follow up, which was with the bombers. So yeah, that worked out quite nicely. But yeah, the, the, that's what the yeah the two hundred or three hundred mil verf I mean, is definitely just good for pinning pinning areas and pushing, which you were trying to do, but didn't quite get there. Unfortunately, it did not work out for me. That's good. I, I like to embarrass myself on YouTube. This is what I do. <laughs> that was a good game. I post. Oh no, it was fun. That, that was that was a fun game. It's good to see Vulcan get back into the one v one community. When when are we going to see you in league again, Vulcan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't start that. My, my viewers might get excited. <laughs> All right, I'm spreading the rumor. Every comment section. <laughs> it's no, gonna, I don't it's, think it's so. It's going to be me saying league question <laughs> mark. <laughs> So GG to uh, Vulcan here. Yep. Fun 1v1. I'm sure there'll be more in the future as we try to warm him up to the idea of playing some more 1v1s. Yeah, that, yeah so that is it for now. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye. Okay,